Hey everybody, and welcome to Purtle Monday. Purtle Monday, where the puzzles are real and the cookies don't matter. Let me just adjust a few things here. Put that over there. Uh-oh, what's wrong? What's wrong? <laughs> Is everything okay? Is everything okay, Tony Rusi? Elise, welcome. Purtle Monday. Debbie Teal, welcome. Welcome to Purtle Mondays. Here we work on puzzles and riddles in order to get better at armchair treasure hunts. Uh, in order to get better at armchair treasure hunts, I like to work on other puzzles, puzzles and riddles in order to make us better at figuring out these puzzles and riddles in armchair treasure and all cookies matter says tony Rusi. welcome and by working on puzzles and riddles we work on these uh cooperatively and this way we all sort of learn some things and get better at armchair treasure hunts so in my opinion by working on different and i specifically do word puzzles uh we w get better at um our vocabulary, it's like I'm trying to figure out myself. Christy Meeps, welcome. Oh, Sweetie is there too. Uh, work on vocabulary, work on our lateral thinking and our ability to think outside the box in order to get better at armchair treasure hunts. And I've got a few leftover lateral thinking puzzles here. K-Pro, welcome. I've got a few leftover lateral thinking puzzles from this website. I think it was last week, it must have been last week. And we're going to work on some of these. Michael Steffen, welcome. Long way to Tipperary, welcome. Capro, okay, I need all the secrets, okay? <laughs> so our first lateral thinking puzzle, you are walking alone on the sidewalk. There are no stars on the sky, no moonlight. All of the lamps on the street are broken. You don't carry any source of light with you, and there aren't any cars or other people approaching. A silent black cat tries to cross your way, but you somehow spot it and turn around in order to avoid bad luck. How do you see the cat? How do you see the cat? Am I a cat? Uh, at least this is daytime. Okay, okay. Oh, Bobby D's here too. Tamara, welcome. How did you spot the cat? You are walking alone on the sidewalk. There are no stars in the sky. No moonlight, all of the lamps on the street are broken, you don't carry any source of light with you, and there aren't any cars or other people approaching. A silent black cat tries to cross your way, but you somehow spot it and turn around in order to avoid bad luck. So it's daytime is what Elise says. I kind of like that, daylight. Davia went, did a live Dune, but I missed it, so I don't know how thoroughly he looked. All right, must be tre treasure hunting related. Zooming. Cat size. Zara says sunlight, daytime. Daytime seems like that would be the solution. Happened during the day, which is cloudy. Who got it first? Elise, cookie for Elise. The sun is a star. Yeah, 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 that's true. All right. I don't think there are too many of these left. How can a baby fall out of a 30-story building onto the ground and still be alive? All right, we, we've had a similar one to this before. How can a baby fall out of a 30-story building onto the ground and still be alive? That's not a pleasant thought, but this is just a lateral thinking puzzle. First floor. First floor, Bobby. First floor. First floor. Yes, yes, yes. That's got to be it. Fell from the first floor. First one was Elise again. first floor we've had something either that exact puzzle or uh, something similar before all right that was the end of that one all right that was that was quick agree with Elise again all right we all agree with Elise so I'm gonna do something that I had trouble with a couple weeks ago it's called a virtual escape room let me put it in the chat here we go copy paste virtual escape room if you would like to, I'm gonna I put the link into the chat. This is a virtual escape room. K Pro did one of these, huh? So Tony Rusi says, uh oh, all right, here, here we go, here we go. Hey, with all of the the smarty pants, as uh, Huli likes to say in the chat room, we should be able to do this one relatively quickly. And I think I, by putting it out there, 
Capro did with the Mike Anna bunch. Well, we're, we've got a bunch of, of pretty smart people here too, Capro, as you know. So we'll get it done. How does it work? Well, for this particular one, there is a four word. I'll get to the other stuff and I'll get to the instructions. There's four passwords that, we, that we're working on. Everybody else know how it works. So there's four words that we're trying to get. And I believe there's a total of four words. Well, why not just read the instructions? Tony Rusi isn't wearing any smarty pants. All right. This is called The Trials of Wisdom. It says, Welcome to The Trials of Wisdom, a virtual escape room by the Sydney Opera House, which was made with the help of the team from Escape This Podcast. If you're not familiar with uh, Escape This Podcast, I believe they do a lot of uh, escape room type things. Some of them they do right on the podcast. Well, they'll, they'll have like a guest and just through sound, they talk about how to get through an escape room. Are we going to explode? I sure hope we don't, JK Pi in here. <laughs> we exploded last time. In order to pass the trials of window, wisdom and escape, you will need to enter the four passwords at the bottom of this page. The clues for each password are hidden throughout. Each room correlates to one word. So there are four rooms, four words, but make sure you enter them in the right order. There are optional hints throughout to help you along the way, but if you need more help, try at Sid Opera House and hashtag Escape the House on Twitter. Amy Seeks, welcome. In 30 minutes, it's inevitable. All right. Uh, full transcript. Yes, I have the full transcript of all the words. Some of them might be difficult to see because they get pictures and things. Uh, and they'll say, no spoilers. If you do escape, revel in it, but keep the password to yourself. All right. Well, we, we're, uh, we won't tell anybody. If you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. So introduction. Uh, I don't believe this is one of the four rooms, but this is like an introductory room, I believe. It's the room with the piano. You look around with uncertainty. This isn't a room normally accessible to the public. You didn't even know it existed. But your show had finished and the audience was all leaving. And as you filed out with them, you just spotted it. That door with its sparkling stained glass window, you had to find out what was behind it. No idea it was going to lock behind you. You had no idea it was going to lock behind you. Your heart beats fast. You need to find a way out of here before security finds you. And yet, curiosity still floods your mind. What is this room? It isn't remarkable. All you see is a piano and an old timey telephone sitting on a table. It rings, vibrating madly. You pick up the receiver. Let me make sure I can hear this too. Password. In order, please. Were you guys able to hear that too? I'll, I can play it again. I can even make it a little bit louder too. Just a little bit. Oh, you could hear it? I'll do it one more time. Password. In order, please. Password. You have no idea what it means, so you hang up. You head to the piano instead. It's a well-kept Steinbach, Steinbach baby grand. Unable to resist, you sweep your fingers across the keys only to be disappointed. Most of them don't work. In fact, only four of the A keys work. Okay, this is where I think we need... That's a bit like Lord Voldemort, oh my. Uh, only four of the A key, four of the A keys work. Two of the Bs, one C, three Ds, and none of the E's, F's, or G's. Okay, I'm going to post the... And if you would like to follow along at home without listening to me, I'm going to put the link of this virtual escape room in the chat again. I'll, I'm going to try to do that semi-regularly as people come in and out of the room. Pity. Oh, look at that. Can I, I can play? Can I play it? I don't hear anything. I was, I was kind of hoping that they, that would make some sound. <laughs> 
J-E-T-E-S-S is what Bobby D has so far. All right. There's no music on the rack, but there seems to be something else. A map with four areas shaded. An orchestra pit labeled A. A props room labeled B. A costuming department labeled C. And a theater labeled D. Behind the map, you find a letter. That, that letter is hard to read. I will bring it up. But there's a map. Okay, so there's four rooms. Okay, Tony Russo says four A keys, two B, one C, three D, and none of what? No E, Fs, or Gs. Jit is seventh. Plié is sixth. No problem, long way. That is... So rooms match the notes. A, B, okay, rooms might match the notes. We got A, B, C, and D. Four rooms, and I'll say the four rooms again. Orchestra pit is A. Props room is B. Costuming department is C. And theater is D. C, B, D, A in order. I'm not sure what you mean by Tamara. That's from the, oh, rooms match the notes. All right, so I'm going to go, and then we're go we have a letter here, and I'm going to pull it up from a transcript. You guys should be able to read this. Oh, all these kind of underlines. Oh, look at it. It underlines all the – there's extra letters. Here we go. C, B, D, A, and it could be Tamara. Uh, remember, we're looking for four passwords. Each room has a password. And this is what the letter says. To whomever has made it this far, I've experienced much joy in life. Now, as I get older, I realize that such happiness should not be held by one person alone. It must be shared. I wish to pass on my good fortune to another. However, I intend to choose the recipient carefully. Opera has always been my fondest passion and all of the shows out there, the one closest to my heart is Mozart's The Magic Flute. It's a story of love and humor, but also of pain and anger. Yet ultimately, the hero's virtue leads him to happiness. He is tested, he is strained, but he completes the mystical trials of wisdom in order to win the hand of his beloved. I have designed my own trials of wisdom. Hidden here, scattered throughout various word puzzles, are four parts of a password, a phrase I value deeply. All you must do to prove your wisdom is locate and speak this password into the telephone. By entering this room, you have chosen to test yourself. Should you succeed, just as in the magic flute, your virtue will bring you all the joy in the world I can offer. I leave you a map in these words. No puzzle can be completed with only one piece. You may need to search for missing pieces or identify ones that don't belong before the whole will make sense. Take notes, read text carefully, and find secret clues and connections. I wish you the best of luck, your hopeful, your hopeful benefactor. Words are misspelled. Any way to read all the double letters could be. Tony Rich says abracadabra. The double O's probably spell something or anagram or something. Could be. So I like how my Microsoft Word sort of underlined all of these double letters. So I'm going to... And you can go ahead and do this at home if you want. I've got J. I've got an extra E. An extra T. An extra E. I... S, S, carefully, I believe that's just an extra E, V, humor is spelled the British way, hero, happiness with an extra N, tested with an extra T, extra H. All right, this is actually spelling out some things. Maybe you've already done this. Oh, it looks like Tamara is already jet is seventh, plié is sixth. Okay, so it all spells out something. So the last one is sixth x h. 
Okay. So I'm going to write that Jet is, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, is seventh. Plie is sixth. All right. We will head back. So that was the note in behind the map on the piano. And I'm, and I had this problem last time because it's not sort of going from A to B to C D. Sometimes we go back and forth. And there might be information and other things. I'm gonna have trouble going back and forth, but I'll do the best I can. And again, and I'm gonna re repeat this again. This is the link to the virtual escape room if you would like to play at home and you don't wanna just watch me, but if you wanna be like long way to Tipperary and just want to sit back and watch, you can do that too. All right, the orchestra pit. This is room A. Room A is the orchestra pit. You duck into the orchestra pit. None of the chairs or stands are set up, bar the conductor's stand. Against one wall in the dark, you spot a cluster of instruments, some in cases, some not. They appear to be grouped by orchestra section. You've got the woodwinds with a bassoon, clarinet, flute, and oboe, the brass with a horn, trombone, and muted trumpet, the strings with a single violin and percussion, a large set of timpani. You examine them and realize that each of the nine instruments has a note affixed. Whew. The notes appear to be about their music, but you know a little about the music of the magic flute and none of the statements seem quite right. They must be referring to something else. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so we've got these notes for the different instruments. The bassoon says, everyone has my part. The clarinet note says, all the brass and no one else has my part. The note for the flute says, four others have my part, but they're all at the start or end. The horn says, my part is unique. The oboe says, nobody else has my part. The timpani, one of the brass has my part, but later, timpani is a part of a type of a drum. Okay, I can. They got a little visual here, so I, I can kind of see it's this type of drum. Trombone says someone else has already played my part. The trumpet note says a woodwind instrument shares my part, and the violin says my part comes after the horn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So we have nine musical instruments. Info overload says long way. All right. It's all right. So you can go ahead and sit back, continue to sit back long way to temporary. It's all good. So we've got nine instruments and nine notes. Get out the notepad. I've, I've got my paper. I've got my paper and pen. Not the type of thing we usually do on Proto Monday, but we're doing a virtual escape room today. There is an optional hint, but I will not click on it right now. And hopefully not later. So this is room A, the orchestra pit. So we have some type of connection of the instruments, something about a part. And there's some connections between the nine instruments and the nine notes. Well, I think we also have three hidden items. You approach the conductor stand and find four sheets of music. The first is labeled Papageno, then Tamino, and Pamina, and finally Queen of the Night. The final one also has some other notes. 26 equals Z, 25 equals Y, 5 equals E, etc. Start simple and gradually more elaborate. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Muted trumpet, 10 letters above. Are the instrument categories listed alphabetically? Let's see. Flute, horn, oboe, timpani. They are. They are located um, alphabetically in the visual. But it does say that they are grouped by orchestra section in the in this section. So we got woodwinds, which is the bassoon, clarinet, flute, and oboe, 
The brass is a horn, trombone, and muted trumpet. Muted trumpet and percussion is a large set of timpani. So they're they're almost in the same order that is listed in the list as they are on the, the visuals. Yeah, simple cipher. 26 equals Z, 25 equals Y. There's some simple cipher, substitution cipher that we've got there using the alphabet backwards. Or not backwards, but numbers into letters, it looks like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at this, see if I figured anything. So we've got the, this is a transcript. It's got the notes and the instruments there. I right, don't want to look at the optional hint. Okay, I think that's everything there. And I'm, and again, the chat, if you want to tell me to go back and look at something, you let me know. So room B, room B is the props room. Props room. The room is so packed you can barely open the door. As soon as you enter, you're bombarded by a collection of vivid, colorful animal props of varying shapes and sizes. Some are practically full-sized, whereas others have been scaled up or down, and almost none are their natural color. You first walk past a life-size pink giraffe and brown elephant, then a huge aqua whale and a green polar bear. After that, a regular-sized black cat, blue turkey, silver wallaby, and white possum. Next come the ones that are bigger than you, but normally wouldn't be. An enormous indigo flamingo, purple fox, and yellow snake. Finally, you pass the ones that have been miniaturized, a small gold lion, orange gorilla, and red horse. On this other end, you've discovered a workshop area where props are built and finished. Sitting in a row on a workbench is a collection of open paints. You read their labels. List colors and see what is revealed. We've got aqua, baby pink, eggshell white, electric indigo, imperial red, midnight blue, Onyx, Orioles Orange, Raw Umber, Royal Purple, Silver Chalice, Vegas Gold, Viridian, and Yellow. Put in Rainbow Order, order Roy G. Biv. Okay, I can see that. And there's an optional hint. Again, this is Room B, the Props Room. Room B, the Props Room. And you can continue, you can work on these things on your own a little bit. I'm I'm trying to just go through to see what we've got here. Again, four rooms, looking for four passwords. Some information might be applicable to other things. So I'm I'm trying to go through all the things here first. Oh, are those alphabetical? Uh, yes, but they've these are alphabetical, but they've added some other things to make them. They got some adjectives, midnight blue, and things to make it sort of differently. How many buckets? That's a good question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen buckets. We have fourteen buckets, Tony Rusi. Yes, fourteen buckets. All right. The third room, room C, is the costume department. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Yep. Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow. That's very likely how things got to be ordered. You open the door. We are in the costume room, right? Yeah, costume department. You open the door and are greeted by a flurry of colors and materials. You only count a dozen costumes hanging, but while some are simple, others are quite extravagant. Extravagant, yeah. One dress has a train so long it would need an entire wardrobe to itself. You approach and find that they all are labeled with a character name and size. You think some of these are from the magic flute, but it's difficult to remember which ones. You examine the costumes carefully and make note of how elaborate they are. Why oh, bother listening alphabetically? Okay. So you make note of all the costumes carefully and make a note of how elaborate they are. 
You've got banker, which is extremely simple, size eight. Count, Alma Viva, extremely elaborate, size 25. Don Giovanni, somewhat elaborate, size two. Ferrando, somewhat elaborate, size 11. Figaro, somewhat simple, size nine. High Priest of Neptune, hey, for, for all of our Fandango fans out there. Extreme, extremely elaborate, size 20. King of Crete, somewhat simple. Wow, we have a lot of costumes. Size 13. Lucia, extremely simple, size 3. Pamina, somewhat simple, size 15. Papageno, somewhat elaborate, size 22. Queen of the Night, extremely elaborate, size 5. And Tamino, extremely simple, size 12. So we've got... How many different costumes? One, two, three, Twelve. Looks like we have twelve costumes. Let me double check. Twelve costumes. Should we just stick with the Magic Flute characters? Could be. Animals look like they're the same colors. Only the last four are in the opera. Are we getting a code for A to Z? Oh, you think the size, these numbers are for the, um, give us letters? It could be. Angeline, welcome. Very well could be. I will not click the hint yet. All right, we have our hidden item number two, which is a measuring tape. Why bother listing them alphabetically? I don't know, Amy. I don't know. <clears throat> we have four rooms, and I think it's three hidden objects. One of the hidden objects we found, and let me let me put this again into the chat. This is our virtual escape room for today. I think Angeline just joined us today. Uh, if you would like to work on it on your own or side by side with the stream, you're welcome to do that. Uh, we are working on this virtual escape room. And we'll see how far along we get. We should be able to figure it out. We've gone through three rooms. This is our second hidden item. Tucked away in a corner, there's a long measuring tape with a splash of light pink paint on it. You find a post-it stuck there. Only work with the big ones, roughly two meters or taller. So I would think that that sounds like it might be related to our... Um, was it the props room with the animals? Yeah, the props room with the different sized animals and the different colors. We'll figure that out in a second. Lee says 12, 15, the characters from TMF in order of simple to fancy spell love. Okay. Pirtle sounds like it would be a good cookie. Giraffe pink. Okay. So only work with the big ones. I have a feeling that's the stuffed animals related to that. All right, our fourth room, which is the theater. The fourth room is the theater. <clears throat> Drinking will make this better, says Angela. All right. There's noise coming from the theater. You creep in silently and see that the stage, that on the stage are a dozen ballerinas all practicing the same movements. That's odd. Surely nobody should be rehearsing at this time of night, let alone in the theater. But here they are practicing with a demanding woman out the front calling, make sure you know your positions in relation to the sign. You watch them dance and see that behind them is a prominent sign that reads the border, T-H-E-B-O-R-D-E-R, -E -E the border. The letters are as big as the dancers. It looks like they're recreating an abstract scene from the magic flute representing the border between night and day. Let me see that picture again. Or animation, I guess, whatever you would call this. The tie-in with the plie. So this is out of order because plie should be six. Okay. 
You observe their warm warm up and memorize the order of their movements. Oh, here we go. So first was the fourth position, then the plie. Third was fifth position. Four was first position. Five was second position. Six was third position. Excuse me. Seventh was plie. Eight was second position. Nine was fifth position. Ten was fifth position. Eleven was jeté. Aberrations along the edges, yes. Could count backwards. Seven positions cycle. Oh, yes. How many different positions are there? First, second, third, fifth. Seems the positions are one through five, and then there's the, the plie and then the jeté. It seems to be giving us an order for the final code on the phone. Oh, you think this is an order? We've only got four. Is this a riddle? Sassy, welcome. We're doing we're doing a virtual escape room. Virtual escape room. There is, if you would like to play along at home. I'm so lost. I'm found and then lost again. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're working on another virtual escape. If you're not into ballet, the plie is the squat and the jeté is the jump. Okay. Plie is a space. Positions are letters. Jeté is a period or question mark. Okay. <laughs> so, again, we have four rooms for the four passwords. And I have not clicked any of the hidden the hints yet. All right, here's our third and final hidden item, which is a recording device. As you sneak closer to the stage, you almost trip over something on the floor. It's a recording device. Once you're in the quiet corner, you pl press play and listen. It sounds like someone from the orchestra is speaking. All right, we got another speaking part. Sounds like someone from the orchestra is speaking. I'm still trying to get my head around this piece. I start with the uh, flute, yes, F-L-U-T-E. I, I should really spell this out. Did the oboe and bassoon have their piece, but I, I have to ignore those. They just throw me off. I come in at the next woodwind. Then there's that drum section. I, I ignore that, too. I, I come back in with the rest of the brass, starting with that high, muted part. Where do I finish again? The horn, H-O-R-N, right? I, I end with the horn. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I'll play that again with Woody Allen's J.K. Piner. Could be. <laughs> um, so it seemed to be going through the order of the musical instruments. And uh, I'll, I'll play it one more time. It sounds like you can hear it all right, too. I'll play it one more time, and we can play it again later on if we need to. I, I'm still trying to get my head around this piece. I start with the uh, flute, yes, F-L-U-T-E. I, I should really spell this out. Did the oboe and bassoon have their piece, but I, I have to ignore those. They just throw me off. I come in at the next woodwind. There's that drum section. I, I ignore that, too. I, I come back in with the rest of the brass, starting with that high, muted part. Where do I finish again? The horn. H-O-R-N, right? I, I end with the horn. I think that's only six six instruments. Are all these clues one thing or separate puzzles? They I think it's both, Sassy. I think it's both. And so that's that's the end of our different rooms. So we have each room represents one password that we have to type in here to figure out what it is. Another order of something. I, th I think so. Room B works out to bravery. All right, so I'm going to go over the rules one more time. Trials of Wisdom, Sydney Opera House, Virtual Escape Room. Bravery. Well, already get that from the colors. I don't know anything that we've got yet so far. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to present everything. Just to repeat what we got, in order to pass this, we need four passwords. The clues for each password are hidden throughout. So the clues can be anywhere, but the password, 
Each room correlates to one word. And make sure we enter them in the right order. They're optional hints. We recommend that you read through with a pen and paper close by. Some parts may, may make sense later. There is a full transcript. Tamara says, room B is bravery. All right. Is the voice of the timpani. I'm not sure, the seeker. Tamara says they have extra words associated. Okay. So the room with the piano is what we started with. It sort of showed us that there were passwords. We were told there was a password. We got to put them in the four passwords in the order. Uh, the piano, most of the keys on the piano didn't work. The ones that did were only four of the A keys, two of the Bs, one C, three Ds, and none of the E's, F's, or G's. So we had four A's, two Bs, one C, and three Ds. This was the introductory room. Uh, we had a note that had extra letters, and that worked out to, I think it was, Who had the ones with the letters, 10 letters above? Uh, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot who got it, but it's jete is seventh, plie is sixth, was what from the extra letters that were in the note. Uh, the map, it talks about the four rooms. If I click this, will it take me right there? Oh, it does, orchestra pit. Orchestra pit. Some of the instruments were in cases, some were not. They didn't say which ones were and were not. Uh, the woodwinds, we had a bassoon, clarinet, flute, and oboe. The brass, we had a horn, a trombone, and muted trumpet. For strings, we had a single violin, and in percussion, we had a large set of timpani. There were notes associated with each instrument. Is this the B? Is this? No, this is A, orchestra pit. We had notes associated with each of the nine instruments. Bassoon says, everyone has my part. Clarinets, the note said, all the brass and no one else has my part. For the flute, the note said, four others have my part, but they're all at the start or end. The horn note said, my part is unique. The oboe says, nobody else has my part. The timpani one of the brass has my part, but later. The trombone says someone else has already played my part. The trumpet note says a woodwind instrument shares my part. And a violin note says my part comes after the horn. Tamara says bravery and Michael Stephan agrees. This puzzle is for 12th graders and I'm in pre cases, Angel. Okay. <laughs> So uh, apparently Tamara's got B for bravery. Uh, we have one set of sheet music. Uh, the first four, there are four sheets. The first one is labeled Papageno, P-A-P-A-G-E-N-O. The second sheet is labeled Tamino, T-A-M-I-N-O. The third one is labeled Pamina, P-A-M-I-N-A. And finally, the fourth sheet says Queen of the Night, and the final one also has some other notes. It says 26 equals Z, 25 equals Y, 5 equals Z, etc. Start simple, then get gradually more elaborate. That looks like a simple substitution cipher. The props room, we have animals of varying sizes and colors. Some are of the animals are scaled up and down. Some, and almost none, have their natural color. So there's a life-size pink giraffe and brown elephant and a huge aqua whale and green polar bear. After that, there's a regular-sized black cat, blue turkey, silver wallaby, and white possum. Next come the ones that are bigger than what normally should be, which is an enormous indigo flamingo, purple fox, and yellow snake. And finally, you pass the ones that have been miniaturized, small gold lion, orange gorilla, and red horse. Then there's a workshop area where props are built and finished. Sitting on the workbench is a collection of open paints. You read their labels. The labels of these 14 colors are aqua, baby pink, 
eggshell white, electric indigo, imperial red, midnight blue, onyx, orioles orange, raw umber, royal purple, silver chalice, Vegas gold, viridian, and yellow. 14 colors. Are there 14 animals? I didn't even check to see if there are 14 animals. We do have 14 animals, 14 colors, 14 animals. Yeah, everybody liked Angeline's song in the Forest Fen tribute video, I agree. Tamara says, C equals love, a simple touch of the four letters, then order the costume. Simplicity, okay. Debbie Teal, Morse code. C equals love for sassy too, okay. The drums is the missing instrument, says Debbie Teal. All right, so, so far, I haven't even gotten to everything, but I will go ahead and type for now. I think bravery and love for the third one. All right, that was the prop room, is room B. Room C is the costume department. Here we have a, a list of costumes with the character name, how elaborate or simple they are, and the size. And how many of these? One, two, three, four. I think there was one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There were 12 of these costumes. The Banker, which was an extremely simple costume, size 8. Count El Almaviva, extremely elaborate, size 25. And I think um, somebody was mentioning about the size numbers could be that substitution cipher. Don Giovanni, somewhat elaborate, size 2. Ferrando, or Ferrando, somewhat elaborate, size 11. Figaro, somewhat simple, size 9. High Priest of Neptune, an extremely elaborate costume, size 20. King of Crete, somewhat simple, size 13. Lucia, extremely simple, size 3. Pamina, somewhat simple, size 15. Papageno, somewhat elaborate, size 22. Queen of the Night, extremely elaborate, size 5. And Tamino, an extremely simple costume, size 12. Could the colors be music notes? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Could be, Seeker. Love is first... Bravery is second. 12 bar. Please explain how, how they are getting answers. I haven't even figured that out myself. Long way to Tipperary. Four letters from... Oh, four letters from the four sheets of music. All right, I'll go back to the sheets of music. It's a hidden item. Papageno, Tamino, Pimino, Pamina, and finally Queen of the Night. This, the sheet music is not one of the four rooms. The first letter of the name of the costume in order of size could be. Or does the size equal the alphabetical letter and spell something? Five equals E. Okay, the sheet music names are the same of costume names. Oh, Pamino, Pamina, Papageno. This is why we gotta, you have to like write these down, I guess. Papageno, Tamino, Pamina, and Queen of the Night. Okay, so those are related to So these, those names of the sheets of music, they were able to get love out of that. I got you. So they took the names from the sheet music and picked out the four of these from this group of costumes. I assume they got the numbers from the substitution cipher and that's what they got. That's how they got love is what I'm thinking. All right, the measuring tape. It has a splash of light pink paint on it. You find a post-it on the measuring tape. It says, only work with the big ones. 
roughly two meters or taller. Two meters is about six feet. <clears throat> Room D, we have the theater where we had the ballerinas practicing. They have something, they had a sign, full-size sign called the border. And they were practicing an abstract scene from the magic flute. The border says this, and the magic flute represents between night and day. You observe the warm up and memorize the order of their movements. And this was the order of their movements. It went fourth position, plie, fifth position, first position, second position, third position, plie again for the seventh, second position for the eighth, fifth position for the ninth, tenth position for the fifth position for the tenth, and jete for the eleventh. Uh, movement. These were the movements of the ballerina dancers. What are the costumes with six or more letters, says Tony Russi. I'll get to that in a second. And just to review, we had a recording device when we, it sounded like someone from the orchestra was speaking and they talked about the, uh, it's some order of the musical instruments. The costumes with Six or more letters. Uh, looks like a great variety. Looks like most of them have six or more letters. It's easier to say which ones don't. Which, the ones that don't are Lucia. And that's the only one. Lucia is the only one without... Uh, that's less than six letters. Are we matching the dancers' movements to the order in the animation? Uh, probably not. I, I don't... If you if you know the positions, I think this is just for helping helping you. Um, I'm sure what we need is, is here and not in the animation, would be my guess. Music, they're dealing with spelling. Thinking T for the first letter. Flute says four share, says four share, all at beginning or end. Trumpet, timpani, trombone, clarinet. All right, we'll listen to the recording device again. This is the, it, he talks about different instruments and what order they have to be. I, I'm still trying to get my head around this piece. I start with the uh, flute, yes, F-L-U-T-E. I, I should really spell this out. Then the oboe and bassoon have their piece, but I, I have to ignore those. They just throw me off. I come in at the next woodwind. Then there's that drum section. I, I ignore that, too. I, I come back in with the rest of the brass, starting with that high, muted part. Where do I finish again? The horn, H O R N, right? I, I end with the horn. Um, there's, there's some order that we need, and he spells out flute and horn. Makes me wonder if it's like the beginning letter of each instrument or something like that. I'm not sure. Trombone has slide position. Substitute the number six for plie and seven for jete. John Miller, welcome. <clears throat> All right, so that is that is our escape room. We have movements. Sassy says, room C, the characters mentioned in the hidden sheet music are used. The sizes give the numbers letter. It spells love. Okay. I believe we're, I get that for room C. The third word is love. Mara thinks it's possibly truth for the music. So we have four rooms. Props. Um, not the props. It's uh, orchestra pit, props, costume room, and theater. You're trying to pull letters from those cues. All right. From those clues. Got it. I think the tape measure has something, and because it's pink, it was it a pink giraffe that was oversized? We're supposed to deal with oversized. 
A pink giraffe was life sized. Well, it's still big. Giraffe and an elephant. Whale, polar bear are probably all over two meters. Regular sized, those are too small, less than two meters, I would think. And enormous flamingo, fox, and yellow snake, and then the miniature. I have I have a feeling it has to deal with those. Tape measure is solved. No, the first word should be love, then bravery, says Bobby D. C was solved by Tamara. Okay. Tony Reese says beauty is last. Fourth, the fourth word from you got beauty from the um, costumes. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. Theater is the fourth one. You got beauty out of this. We got love, bravery, truth. Tony Rooster says beauty. Okay. No, beauty doesn't work. <clears throat> Tamara says flute, clarinet, muted trumpet, trombone, horn. Clues from those pull the letters truth. Okay. So you think, so that would be the first one then, truth, because that would be the orchestra pit. Truth, bravery, love, is there, yeah, you think, it, you think Tony Bruce is just trying to figure out what the last word is, if we got that? No, Bobby D says truth is last. Oh, final order would be room CBDA. Oh, based on the piano. Oh, Okay. Piano, C, B, D, A. Okay, I got you. Because there's only one C, C, B, D, A, based on the number of keys. Got it, got it, got it. So truth is last. So you think it's blank, bravery, love, truth. Oh, no. Love, bravery, blank truth. Okay, yeah. I don't know where you guys got the other, the other ones from, so I don't know what the correct order is. <laughs> Let's see what we got over here. I think we're doing okay. Doing all right over there. Minimize that. So how do we do the ballet? So there's looks like there's a total of five different positions plus plie and jeté. Michael Seven says room D is brotherhood. So in the C, B, D, A, you think brotherhood is the third one. Love, bravery, brotherhood, truth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You used the sign to be the key substitution for the positions. Okay. So you it, each letter is from each one of these. Okay. So did I get it in the right order? Love, bravery, brotherhood, truth based on the CBDA. 
We'll see. Hey, good job. How are the letters defined? Uh, the which letters? The CBDA. That's the only one I know. You speak the four words into the receiver. The voice at the other end is silent, and for one dreadful moment, you think you got it wrong. Then you hear a click. It comes from the glass door, the one that locked you in here at the start of all this. Is it open? Are you free? But what are the rewards the letter promised? The so soft voice on the phone speaks at last. Go outside and turn around. Bewildered, you do as it says. The door opens easily and you make your way back to the main foyer. It's dark and ghostly silent, but as you reach the entrance, the warm, familiar sight of the harbor greets you. It seems somehow brighter than usual. You head out and walk until you're standing in front of the monumental steps. There are few passers-by at this hour, all of whom seem to be peering up at something behind you. You turn around. Colors are swirling across the great white sails. Joyous reds, golds, aquas, all the colors of the painted animals you found, dancing over each other in a dazzling light projection. The person on the phone must be controlling it. The colors form the words the same words that made up the password love bravery brotherhood truth then one more climb you climb up the steps perched at the very top is a wooden box with a note attached remember that password for it is the key to wisdom in much more than just opera that and this is your reward do with it what makes you happiest but do be careful handling it it was crafted in 1791 for a very special premiere, you open the box and a nor ornate carved wooden flute lies inside. You have escaped. <laughs> Tell the word. It's a wooden flute. Oh my goodness. It's breakfast tea and bourbon all over then. It's a Suli. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good time, Bobby. I was I was more presenter than being able to, to figure it out. But I didn't want to look at, so I was asking how how to hint. What are these hints? All right, hidden item. Okay, so for the orchestra pit, optional hint. The object found in the theater may help you figure out what these parts refer to. The person on that recording certainly found spelling important. So that was the hint. That was actually from the hidden item. Another optional, it looks like each animal was painted with one of these colors. Does matching them up reveal anything? Also, don't forget about the hidden item in the costuming department. The hidden item in that was the tape measure. The hidden item from the orchestra relates to these little notes. <clears throat> 26 equals Z, 25Y. Must be some sort of instruction. Uh, see, the hint for the hidden item was the recording device. It sounds like the sign is very important. What could the dancer's positions be telling you to look at on the sign? Also, did you notice the hidden hint in the letter in the piano room? Mm. Hidden hint in the piano room. That was the, as someone else figured out, CDBA in order to figure it out. Yes, breakfast tea and bourbon. Sassy liked it, great. I'm, 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 happy, I'm happy everybody liked it. I get to. I didn't get too frustrated. There weren't too many rooms and things. <laughs> <clears throat> so I hope everybody enjoyed that. And look at that. We're at the end of the hour too. So that's that's great. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed today's edition of Purtle Monday with a virtual escape room. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day, the rest of the week. If Calazars is coming up, they'll be coming up later on. Maybe in an hour, maybe two hours. We'll see. Oh, super fun for Tamara. Great. And to, long way, great, enjoyed watching guys on. Great. <laughs> so I hope you have the, uh, the enjoy the rest of your Monday, best day of the week. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see everybody else next Monday. Take it easy, everybody. And I'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye.